Hello, my name is Benji and welcome to Dice vs Cards. Today is the continuation and finale of our countdown of the hottest, and by that I mean the highest rated games with the year 2020 in parentheses, over on Board Game Geek of the dot com. There isn't a great deal of subtlety or nuance about the breakdown of this list, we're just giving our subjective thoughts on each game's appeal. Check out last week's video for the numbers 10 to 6, and as I'm sure by process of elimination you've guessed, today we are counting from 5 to 1. So wait, what comes first? Oceans is the next standalone instalment of the Evolution series of games published by North Star Games. One that's been apparently three years in the making, whoop whoop, that brings engine building under the sea. From the well documented and photographed life forms that inhabit the shallow depths to the fantastical creatures that lurk in the deepest of the deep. What this means in gameplay terms is that you'll be managing a hand of cards that you'll then use to adapt to your species in the communal ecosystem, and then transition from growing your species in the early game to migrating them to other locations in efforts to keep them alive in the latter part of the game. The need to feed your little marine pets, however, will do nothing to stop from the aging process. And so in that sense we're looking at a highly thematic game that has clearly had a great deal of devotion added to its artwork. I find at least from the screenshots that it's a bit hit and miss for my taste, but then it's also fair to say that I have the artistic flair and understanding of a block of stone. Its turn based nature differs from the previous iterations of this series and it really does stand alone in that sense making for a more interactive, yet inevitably slower game at the table. I've mixed feelings about playing this game, but I'm certainly interested to see how the interactive and game state changing elements add to the competitive nature of what is otherwise a great looking game. Takenu, Obelisk of the Sun, aka Welcome to Ancient Egypt Dice Draft in Style and a fairly heavyweight game to kick off this portion of the list. There's no getting away from the giant obelisk in the middle, or not quite, of the game board. But thank god then that this is not just decorative. The length of the game depends on how much daylight you're getting each day, as the shade that the big statue casts over the board will have an effect on the gameplay. Wait, no, no, I misread that. This will take you between 1 and 2 hours, excluding setup and put away of course. This is too complicated a game to describe in a nutshell, suffice to say there are 6 sections on the board, all representing one of a selection of Egyptian gods. You'll then be drafting different coloured dice, not all of which will be available at a given time, and then taking different actions depending on what god you choose a number of which will result in you constructing structures, pillars and workshops, and the others centering around the happiness of your people and the gathering of cards that will open up your available options. I must admit, this one intrigues me, the dice drafting and the effect that the shade has each round on the game has definitely piqued my curiosity. By the same token, I'm not going to be rushing out to buy this one. I want to see it in real life and then go from there. Let's see if this one keeps winding its way up the BGG list. Eclipse, the second dawn of the galaxy, is one way to make a game seem more like a sequel than a revision I suppose. But do not be fooled, this is an updated version of the 2011 4X classic Eclipse. And I'll let the publishers fill in some of the rest. The game of Eclipse places you in control of a vast interstellar civilization, competing for success with its rivals. You explore new star systems, research technologies, and build spaceships with which to wage war. There are many potential paths to victory, so you need to plan your strategy according to the strengths and weaknesses of your species, while paying attention to the other civilization's endeavors. 
I've seen this described as a shorter version of Twilight Imperium, the big granddaddy of 4X diplomacy games. And if you want to oversimplify things, then there are worse shorthand descriptions. But I'm confident in saying that Eclipse stands well and truly on its own two feet, and they've certainly gone to town on this version, at least in terms of production quality. Each faction having its own set of bespoke miniatures only adds to the theme and immersion. That being said, there's a lot going on here in terms of table presence. And one thing's for sure, if you like sci-fi themed 4x games and you only have half a weekend to spare, then I suspect this is going to see a great deal of table time. On Mars is one more Kickstarter to add to the list. My lord, whatever happened to predictable retail release dates? Now is it safe to say this is a heavy, heavyweight version of Terraforming Mars, played more as a solid Euro with nothing in the way of take that? Maybe, but its only concession is that its semi-cooperative nature means that someone has to win-win. This is definitely weighty strategic fare, whichever way you swing it. There are a myriad of actions to choose from each turn, and you'll be passing around the table until everyone's had enough. And the hook is that certain actions will be available to you only if you're in a certain space on the board, and or the orbiting space station. Each turn consists of doing things and then moving, doing things then moving. Sounds pretty straightforward, but rest assured the doing things and then the shall I shan't I conundrum of moving and forward planning is about as strategic as you'll find in a game. I'm excited by this one, I really am. Maybe it's because I generally love Mars based games, or maybe it's the masochist in me that can't wait to see if I can master its complexity, or whether it's going to chew me up and spit me out. Either way, I want to find out. Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion, aka the A4 ring binder sized dungeon crawler that could. Taking the bulk of what makes its parent Gloomhaven the numero uno on BGG and slimming it down to an introductory product that retains basically everything great about its mechanics is no mean feat. Yeah, I have to say this is a fantastic game, especially for the price point it's sitting at. Now is this a template for how to completely remove a barrier to entry to an otherwise amazing gameplay experience? Well, if it's not, it's pretty damn close. Putting aside dealing with cramming everything inside the box once you've unpacked it, I find this an absolute delight to play. The hand management, no dice to be seen anywhere, combat mechanics, are where this game's strategic enjoyment takes place. Everything is in the cards. The forward planning, the manipulation of objects, the supporting of the other party members. Plan appropriately and at the right initiative and you'll coast your way through the multiple scenarios available out of the box. Character progression and side quests are in here too, with the only notable sacrifice being the cardboard standees, representing the mobs and minions. There's a reason this has been skyrocketing up the BGG list of top games and I'll be interested to see how this and Daddy Gloomhaven sit when the dust settles. So there you have it, a list full of new, revised and expanded game systems. Much like the first part, there's definitely a hint of BGG duplication bias on here, but either way you swing it, this is a list of great and popular games. I do hope you've enjoyed this rundown and my take on it, however that's it from me, I'll see you next time.